that's okay. We've got another snowstorm. We're expecting 15 to 25 centimeters, which works out to 6 inches to a foot. You're going to have a lot. You see this? I just cleaned this off the other day as well. So we're going to have a little fireside chat. Just want to have a peek around here, make sure everything's in order. And uh, we'll hook you up to the uh, tripod here. And we'll lower it down. And we'll screw you on here. Hang on. Point it down here. Slide you over here a bit. Let's see what we can do about getting this thing fired up. Go get them. So the dog's not in here. Let's get this going. in orders all year. Alright. Okay. Now, see this? Little more. Newspaper. And I learned this trick from a guy named Eric. Take him. Make a donut out of it. Never-ending supply of newspaper. And I don't buy the newspaper.
One more. Just a minute. I'll get the dogs up there. Hey! Stop that! This is the birthday boy. Right here. Ice is three years old today. Sit. Ice, sit. Hey, sit. And now you, a good boy. Happy birthday. Oh, you're cold. Yeah, you're freaking cold. You are. Just a minute. They're not, they don't all have on a fur coat. Okay, there you go. Back onto the fire. One more big. Get myself my own plate in the seat. And here we are. Now. Yeah. See how well this uh, audio is here, but uh, we're uh, pondering getting another dog. This will be the third one, and they're all brothers from the same parents. So we're going to look at getting another male. So we're not sure on that yet. We're thinking about it. Thank you. And uh, my, I kind of like the name Cosmo for the new one. Or my wife likes, or mentioned she liked, Ghost. Now. I just want something that goes with ice and storm so that when I say, you know, this is ice, storm, and uh, whatever, it goes together. But, uh, well, write your, write your thought what you think the dog should be called in the comments. Uh, so anyway, it's 2021, we got a blizzard coming, or here already actually, a snowstorm and a road advisory and all that, then tomorrow's supposed to be nice, and then we got two more days of snow after that coming, I don't know. Plus I see I didn't empty the the bucket of ash from inside the house from the last time I filled it up. And I do want to get this uh, garage kind of sorted out here after it warms up. It was 3 degrees centigrade or about 33, 34 Fahrenheit would be my guess. Seven centigrade and about thirty-eight 
Fahrenheit. And I got a coffee over here. I think I remembered that. She's, the fire is beginning to dwindle. I'll put another piece of kindling or two in there. Just leave the door cracked for a bit. There we go. Now, who says you can't start a fire the way I did? It's a piece of cake. Put the big stuff on the bottom and work your way up to the top. And that's burning. You see in there, the bigger pieces are already caught fire. You're just waiting for it to really pick up some steam. You leave the uh, the door cracked just a little bit, and that allows uh, a whole bunch of extra air in there. Now I've got no chance or no choice but to run the uh, shop heater and pay a little electricity till I get this thing here get, kicks on here. And uh, that's just the way it is. Whoa. So I haven't been out here probably in a couple of months. I uh, put, made a nice coffee in a thermos too. It would be nice if the, the cup was warm on the outside, but it's cold in here. <laughs> so, if I feel up to it, tonight I might blow out some of the driveway. Because if we get a foot, there will be a foot and a half in, in the driveway, and then it's getting deep. And that'll take us uh, several hours to get it done. So, ooh, look, she's lit right up now. Now I had some guy there a while back saying not to light the fire like that, and I watched uh, another fella who, who actually has one of these things. Uh, DYI Homestead, a fella in Alaska. And that's how I light mine, just like that. Now, sometimes I get a backdraft on this thing when I try to light it and it blows a pile of smoke into the room. And as soon as that happens, I immediately open up the door, equalize the pressure inside the garage to outside, and then the... Uh, smoke will start to go up and the heat will start to go up the chimney 
and that's the end of it. It works, works like that every time. And uh, sometimes our fireplace in the house works the same way. Now we got the door wide open. Well, the door cracked open and the, the the draft, what it is, wide open as well. And I'll let that go for a bit more, a couple minutes, and then I'll just close the door and wait until I can get some more wood in there. And the temperature gauge is starting to go up on the ch chimney. Oh, and the fan just started. And there's the chimney. It's about 160 degrees. Fahrenheit. But it takes a while to get going. Now this is a double wall pipe. There is no uh, dampener in the uh, on the flue, and uh, I believe the design of this thing. It's a yodel, by the way. Uh, I can't remember the model number right now. Uh, it's in other videos, but the way the top of it's shaped, it's hard to tell, but you can't uh, get a, a big piece of wood in there to burn. All You can only burn this little stuff here. So i got to take all the short pieces and split them into something smaller so that I can get them in here. Once this thing starts to burn down, I can put in like a bigger piece of the short pieces, but that's it. I wouldn't buy one of these if, unless it was for a, oh, maybe a one-room cabin or something like that. And this here garage, there's a loft, so I suspect a lot of the heat's going off the top. And I haven't gotten around to getting some uh, foam board, that uh, blue insulation, styrofoam stuff, to seal off the uh, top part of the garage. But, so the loft, so the heat don't go up there. But uh, we don't use the loft that much. So. With this snow, I might be able to get my snowshoes going again. And those are big boy snowshoes. They'll hold, uh, I think it's 350 pounds. Now my weight went up in the last month. I gained about 10 pounds, so... No more pop for a while, for a long while, and uh, more water, more of that salad stuff, and uh, see if we can lose some. That might have an effect on my foot as well. We got enough wood in here to last me a good month, so I'm not too worried about dragging firewood in here, and I don't want to drag it in here if it's all going to be get covered with snow. I want to try to keep as much moisture out of the garage as I can. Now the 
temperatures up to about 260 degrees Fahrenheit. Celsius, I think. Now we could cook on this guy. Now this fan. Let's see if that does anything. Turn it around the other way. So it'll blow some air on the, the exhaust, on the chimney to see if that blows more air into the room. But it, it doesn't go fast enough. And I think the temperature outside is minus 5 right now. in here now. That's cold. So I don't know how long I'm going to sit here actually. Temperature is up to uh, 380. But you look at here, I can't get any more wood in there except for little pieces. Roaring pretty good. Yeah. I've got a quite a bit of kindling left to burn. I'm going to uh, go out with the chainsaw when it gets a little nicer out. And I'm going to knock down about five or six big trees. Probably mostly poplar. And uh, start getting the dogs geared up to uh, drag it all back. It's not exactly how I plan to spend my retirement, but if I can get myself four cords of wood, I save myself around $1,200. Now, I don't want to get into it, but uh, the government said, Mr. Trudeau that is, I'll look after our seniors. They are a priority. And he gave us 300 bucks. And that was the end of it. They closed the case on that. Then his finance minister got caught with the freaking hand in the cookie jar of somewhere. And he quit. Then they got another one in there. And this woman comes on the TV and says... For all you seniors that have been hoarding your money all these years, we need to kickstart the economy. Will you please spend your money? 
Holy Jesus. I'm telling you, there's something wrong in this world. Our politicians, they seem to forget. Once they get elected, they serve the party. They don't serve the people that elected them. And uh, things are getting worse. Something going on in Alberta. I don't know what it was. They're all up in arms today. And uh, Ontario, there was a guy that, I can't remember what he was doing. He was a finance minister maybe as well in the pro provincial government. He went on a vacation down south, made out that he was still in Canada, put out a Christmas video or something, and then he got caught coming back into Canada after he lied about where he was. Well, he quit. That's an honorable thing to do. But... Uh, We've got a lot of politicians since COVID started. You don't ever hear about them anymore. They're not working. Most of them aren't working. And uh, nice to collect that big fat paycheck they get and do nothing for it. Oh. Anyway, that's the rant on that. I don't want to. I don't want my channel to be, uh, or our channel to be, nothing more than Sheepy Hollow with the birds, the dogs, the trees, the firewood, blowing snow, you know. There, that's blowing pretty good now. Sure doesn't feel any warmer in here though. The problem with making the videos for me out here is I have a one megabit upload speed at the best of times and I've got 10 megabit Upload or download speed. So, if I was to get that uh, Starlink, I could upload one of my videos from Cheapy Hollow in a, under an hour, maybe less than that. I don't know. They're getting around 30 or 40 megabit upload speeds. That's 30 to 40 times faster than I can do it now. And a lot of times, I would like to play my game, uh, World of Tanks. But if I play that, the upload speed goes to a crawl. And the game gets all jerky, warpy, if you understand what I mean. You can't play it. Nothing like being in a tank, and you've already been killed, and you're still trying to fire the fire. <laughs> you're still trying to shoot the other guy. That ain't no fun. There we go. Well, let's get it. Well, I could probably squeeze another piece of wood in there now. If it isn't one thing, it's another around here. Ooh. One of the fingers on my other pair of gloves is split right here. And these are expensive gloves. These are made from Eddie Bauer, I think. You can stick it. There it is right here. L.L. Bean. And I can stick my hand right in the fire. Right. This 
down to 300 Fahrenheit. There's something I was going to do out in the garage I can't remember now. Now let's, let's choke this thing right back. There. Now, that draft is fully closed, and I'll watch the temperature up here to see if the needle moves after I choked it off. Looks like it's going down. We'll see here in a minute. But that snow... It's coming down. down a little bit. You can see the fires died off a little bit as well since I choked it back. But that wood, it's hard to say how long it really will last. Maybe an hour. Where in the house, you can put these big guys in there. And those things there will last three hours before I have to go and put some more in. And it won't take long to burn that off. I had it ugh, piled up to here yesterday. So we've come down quite a few cubic feet already. I was going to tell you a story, but I can't remember which one I was going to tell you, so I'm going to come up and think about one, and then I'll tell you a story. All I know, well, this temperature has dropped quite a bit. It's down to 280. And being that I'm not going to be out here too much longer... Let's let her rip. So here, you can see the temperature has dropped. The fire's going flat out now. There, you 
can see it all now. I wish I could grow hair in my chest real fast. It's cold out here. And you can, you want to see what it looks like? I don't know if you can see out the window here. But every once, there's heavy snow coming down. And then every once in a while, there's a, uh, a bunch of snow blown off the roof. to lift the wipers but I keep forgetting to put a carpet in the front of the window or something. I'm thinking about one of those rubber carpets. But I got to be careful because I don't want it to peel the uh, paint off of the car. Yes, the story. Yes, our dog is, uh, the little one is three years old, and we're thinking of a third and final dog. These dogs last to about 10 years old, and these ones here may be a little longer, this particular breed. It depends. These guys got a pretty good, they get high-quality food supplemented with uh, organ, cooked organ meats and stuff like that, chicken necks, chicken feet, turkey necks, turkey feet, plus a, a whole bunch of different uh, organs like uh, heart, tongue, liver, kidneys, and such from pigs and sheep, beef, and then they get some chicken parts. So they eat pretty good. So I suspect that they will live a long life. They'll have also, they got lots of exercise here. Storm is four, or he'll be four here pretty quick. And uh, both those dogs, we learned that if you put them in the bed with you, when they, they don't pee in their bed, so when they want to go to the bathroom, they try to get off the bed. That means they crawl on top of me, and then I just grab them and throw my house coat on, slip into a pair of rubber boots, take them out, do their business, and bring them right back in and go back to bed. It's a hard few months before they get clued in and want to go outside all the time. Ice, for example, when we picked them up, it would be like uh, 10 weeks from now, 8 or 10 weeks from now. So that puts us into March. And uh, he only ever peed and did his business on s snow. And it was quite funny because when you take him outside, he'd be looking for the snow. And then uh, all of a sudden there was no snow. So he had to figure it out on his own that he didn't have to have the snow to go to do his business. And uh, we discovered that he had a broken tail. The, the last four inches of his tail there's uh, is bent like this. I don't know if you see that or not. And uh, I was surprised when I seen that. Now when he first came home uh for the first two or three weeks, 
He was biting Storm like you wouldn't believe. And then finally Storm one day said, enough is enough. I freaking went at him. <clears throat> After that, the puppy would play with Storm. And Storm would still play with the puppy. But the puppy was not so eager to bite Storm anymore and chew on him. And it saved us from getting chewed on. Because those little teeth are like hypodermic needles. I was really lucky to find one. When they fall out, you don't get to see them fall out. They don't get loose like normal baby's teeth. Imagine they do, but it's really rare to find them. And then you've seen these little white thing on the floor. I picked it up and I thought, geez, this looks like uh, one of those tumbling jacks. You know, you could, when some of us older guys were kids, or folks, uh, you'd play that with that little brown ball, little rubber ball, and then you'd have these jacks and you had to pick them up. They're great things to leave on the floor, but your parents would find them for you in the middle of the night. They kind of like uh, when we were kids, they were the Lego of our time. So uh, usually they would go missing once the old man stepped on them. He'd gather them up and you'd never see them again in the house. Oh, look at that. 500 degrees. And I can feel a little heat off of that thing now. Problem is, I'm sitting too far away. But I can feel some radiant heat. When, uh, the year that we got, uh, Ice is the year that we got, also got the snowblower. And right out there, there's a lilac bush. If you look outside, the, maybe earlier in the video here, at the beginning, when I shuck, stuck it out the window, we had snow piled up onto the top of the, the lilac bush, and I must have had it piled up there. My guess is it's 10 feet high, maybe more. And the dogs would get up there. And every once in a while, ice would disappear. Or he would uh, take off and he'd get into the heavy snow. Because he wasn't very heavy, he could walk on top of it. But you couldn't run on top of it. I had to come in here and put my snowshoes on once to go get him. After that, we got the leash for them. And... The following summer after we got ice is when we uh, fenced in the backyard so that the dogs, uh, we didn't have to worry about them anymore. You couldn't let Storm out because he'd disappear. He'd go, oh, maybe three, four miles away from the house before he turned around and come back. He's lucky he didn't end up with a mess of freaking coyotes. They might have made short work of him then. Not now. Neither of them. Each dog weighs about 120 pounds. I'm not sure how many kilograms that is. But it's heavy. Uh, I don't know. Lots. And because of that, a coyote's maybe 40, 50 pounds. Somewhere around that neighborhood. So they're twice as big or bigger, more than twice as big as a coyote. They'd have no problem ha handling one or two of them if they played it right. They just got to catch them first. And Storm is really fast compared to Ice. Ice is powerful. And we'll get to test that out. Let's see. Well, there's a little warmth on the tripod. 
Yeah, we'll test ice out soon enough, but I don't feel like going out in the weather like today. Yesterday was a nice quiet day around here. Kirkland ham that came out of Costco, and I didn't know what the wife was saying. She says, "Turn it, turn it," so I can, so we can get to the slices. And I thought, "What the hell is she talking about?" It's the first ham I ever had that's already pre-sliced. So you cook it for a couple of hours or whatever it is. And when I brought it out, I didn't notice it. Because I had it laying on the side. But when you flip it around, you could just pull the slices of meat off of it. It's pretty good. They were, oh, I don't know, maybe three-eighths of an inch, quarter of an inch, or less. Uh, I don't know. Pretty good. About this big. It's a pretty good size slice. And uh, then, uh, just like the wife did with the turkey, she uh, cut it up into several groups. One group with the bone on it, and there's a lot of meat on it. we got to go and get some split peas in the city the next time we go in. Hopefully we can find them. I like the green uh, split peas. And we'll make a nice green pea soup with the ham bone in it and uh, big chunks of ham in it. And uh, the other stuff, we've got enough for a couple of meals for later. My wife was going to go and visit her mother today, but uh, not with these roads. And if, you never know when the plow's going to come out here. And uh, the friggin' the plow, most of the time, puts his blade down just as he gets to our driveway so we don't get a ton of snow piled up in front of our, uh, at the end of the road. And that stuff there, because it usually snows around here, minus 5 to 0 or 1 degrees out Celsius. And uh, it's really a heavy, wet, and sticky snow. We do get some blizzards when it's very cold out. And uh, we'll get 3 feet of snow in some of those. I almost went out yesterday. And uh, lit the fire outside. Oh, uh, we'll wait. It's not going anywhere. Boy, you can feel the heat off that now. Now the temperature's down to about 460. Meaning... You could probably stuff a piece of wood in there again. But I don't like coming out here and sitting on the bench doing nothing. If there's something I could be doing instead. But uh, that's, I'm not doing anything today.
Yeah, it's warmed up to about 11 or 51 degrees, so that's not too bad. Just wished I had a bigger heater out here. Maybe one day. So Welcome to the new subscribers. We got 423. 66 people signed up in the last 28 days or something. That's pretty good. We're almost halfway to my goal of 1,000. Of course, I'd like more than that. But uh, I'd be happy to be able to have 1,000 people following the whatever happens on Cheapy Hollow. We'll uh, be putting in a big garden again this year, but my wife's finally starting to figure it out, make it easy. We had uh, no more green peppers because they don't get very big up here unless you get them well started in the house beforehand. And then uh, we usually have so many tomatoes that you could uh, we could have tomatoes every day for the rest of our life, every year. We end up giving quite a bit of them away. But what we need more of is uh, food for the dogs. And they, we can grow squash, zucchini. I don't know if they'll eat that. Or if it's good for them. But they'll eat squash, turnip, and carrots all boiled and mixed together. And then we put the organ, the, you know, the other meats in with it. And uh, that's what they get on top of their kibble every morning. And it gives them something to, for a little bit of energy for when they're outside frigging around doing whatever they do. Mostly what they're doing is guarding. And getting rid of that freaking squirrel. There's three of them now. Hitting the feeders. And uh, it's not like the birds. The birds will go into the feeder. And take the seed and go away. And eat it somewhere else. The squirrels go in there. And they just eat it all. As much as they can get in their little. Stuff in their little fat faces. So I want to modify the bird feeder a little bit. Got to get around to it. Because where the one feeder is on the right hand side, where the where the, the feed barrels are, uh, somebody's going to walk into it with their face one of these days, and that's not going to be very pleasant. And if I move it over far enough, maybe the squirrels will go the different direction than head inside the uh, the woodshed, and I still got to get. Uh, some screen to put over it to keep the squirrels from uh, getting into the woodshed will give them an eviction so they can run around all they want on the outside of the uh, dog house that'll keep the, do the dogs entertained but the dogs they already know how to open up the uh, gate until I put that latch on there and I didn't quite get the gate the, the latch part lined up right so it, you got to frig with it every time. Story of my life. Get a frig with it. Anyway. I think that's it for now. Temperatures dropped down to 380. It's got a nice glow in there now. It's hot. But it's not that hot out here yet. But thanks for coming along for the ride. And uh, all the best to 2021. It's going to be a it's going to be a good year for everybody.
people will get back to work. Maybe not at the same job, but there'll be more jobs. And uh, if you have a chance, go get yourself some more education because that won't hurt you at all. It'll, if anything, it should help. And uh, good luck in all your endeavors. Look at that, eh? Nice. Wonder if a guy could use that like a kiln. Oh, I can hear the snow blowing on the house. It's enough for me. I'm going in. So thanks for coming along. And uh, sayonara. I noticed I got quite a few friends from uh, or subscribers from Japan. Why don't you leave yourself a uh, or leave me a little bit of a comment and uh, tell me where you live and then I'll take a look on the map and uh, do some wondering. Maybe Google Map has been there and I can explore your city. Anyway, have a good one. Bye-bye.